My name is Greg Kunzweiler. I'm part of the Center for Teaching and Learning, and we're going to jump into Outlook tips and tricks. And so uh, let me go ahead and start out by sharing my screen. Um, share screen two. All right, so here's what we're going to be doing today. So I'm going to dive into um, Outlook uh, within the web version, and then there's also uh, the desktop version. And so let me preface um, the desktop version. Uh, double check to make sure you're on the Office 365 version of Office and not the 2016 version, or I think the latest one they've started installing on some of the machines is 2019. Um, that's the one that uh, do it automatically installs whenever people get a new machine. Um, and that's the one, the licensing that the, they have. But each one of us has the Microsoft Office 365 license. And so what you really want to do is get rid of that other version. And you want to make sure you have this newer version because you're going to have all the latest features not only in Outlook, but you're going to have all the latest features in Word and PowerPoint and Excel and all of the applications they have. And so you have a license for up to five different devices that you can that you can install it on. So double check and make sure that you have that. If not, um, if you know you don't have it, then I would put in a help ticket uh, to IT and say, I would like to get this different version put onto mine. And what they'll do is they'll actually remote into your machine, uninstall your other one and put the new one on uh, for it as well. Um, but a lot of the sessions that we're gonna have, and we'll actually have a whole Microsoft Office 365 series that we'll probably be doing in the fall. Um, and we're gonna be using the tools that are part of Office 365 and not part of the 2016 version that you may currently have installed on your machine. So. Um, that's what I wanted to preface before we get started. So what and we're going to do is we're going to... Hold on, Greg. The way they can find out which version they have, um, I, uh, they would... I, I, you want to so I can show or... you real quick. Yeah. So if you go here and you go to file um, and you go to your office account here, mm -hmm. so, and you can do this in Word or Excel or PowerPoint too, the same thing. Um, you go to office account. You'll see over here where it says subscription product. Mine says Microsoft 365 apps for enterprise. And so that's the version that you want. If you had the 2016, then that's probably what it would say here. So you just want to make sure if you don't, <clears throat> then you put in a help ticket and get IT to help you get that installed. Um, but that's the version that you want. And that's the one you want to request, you know, is the Microsoft 365 applications. So that's that uh, version. That's how you can tell. Um, good question. So let me go ahead and jump over to uh, the web version. And so the web version, you can access from any computer, uh, quite frankly, and you can access it on your phone or anywhere else if you wanted to. And so what I want to do is dive into just a few. And we're going to most of this is going to be spent in the desktop version because the desktop version just is a much more powerful than this other version. Um, but I do want to show you a couple of really cool features uh, that are in here as well. Um, one of the simple ones is just uh, your appearance. Okay, you can see there's a background in here. So I could actually go up to uh, this section here, the gear, and I can actually start to change the different themes. And we're going to do the same thing when we get to the desktop version. Some of this stuff kind of show you how to do it in this one, and then I'll show you how to do it in the desktop version as well. Um, but I could change to a different view if I wanted to. So if I wanted some palm trees or whatever and the sunset, you know, you can change it to this. Um, the other piece that you can have as well uh, is dark mode. And so what dark mode is it shifts it to where it's a black backdrop with white or colored 
text. And so sometimes that's easier on the eyes to see. So you can shift that around. Um, you could actually change and do um, focused inbox. And focused inbox usually is the people that you know or you get quite a few emails from. Um, not quite sure how they set up the algorithm that reads which ones are totally focused as an inbox, but usually the people you've been going back and forth or if they have the same domain like at St. Leo, those will automatically drop into the focus. I usually don't use it that way just because sometimes I may miss an important email somewhere else. So I don't always recommend that one. And then if you use the web version, I recommend if you wanna see notifications popping up on your screen, you could go ahead and turn that on as well. And so you could actually see it um, pop down in the bottom corner, the notification. So if you get a new email, it just automatically pops up at the bottom. Then you can also see um, down here where this is the full. If I go to medium, you'll see how it squishes it a little bit. And then if I go to compact, it squishes a little bit more. So I can see more of my email on here if I go with the compact version. Um, some people like to do the conversation type view. So if you got emails back and forth, like replies, you may want to look at it that way. Um, I usually don't because sometimes I get lost. When there's three or four back and forth. And then the conversation view, it just kind of throws it off to me. Um, I'd rather see my latest emails pop up rather than the conversation. But some people prefer to have that as well. Um, and then you can dive into even more Outlook settings uh, down here. So there's a lot of different settings. We're not going to go through most of these, but I always recommend just going through and, and checking out, you know, what are some of these other features? You know, even, you know, here was the appearance. So you can see there's even more uh, options for backgrounds, um, whether you want your notifications to come through. Um, you know, there's, there's multiple other ways to take a look at this and even looking at your email. So those are some of the basic Outlook settings that you can take a look at when you're in, um, in the online version of it. Then let's take a look at um, customizing your toolbar. So this is your toolbar. So right now, you know, I'm on this particular email right now, and this is my toolbar and I have different uh, options up here. What you can actually do, and this is pretty new, I think this is within the last month or so, they've added this um, custom feature. So I go to the three dots, I go to custom, and now what I can actually do is I can add any of these other ones or remove any of these if I don't want those on my toolbar. So you can really customize your toolbar to fit the way you want it to be. So um, you want to have the flag feature on or to pin it. Um, you can do that. Or if you like to print your emails, sometimes you might want to add that one. If there's a couple other ones like sweep or whatever that you don't want in there, you can go ahead and remove those from there. But once you do that, just go ahead and hit save and you'll have your custom toolbar that's going to be like that every single time. So they definitely give you some more features uh, to, to put into your toolbar in the online version of, what, of Outlook. Uh, the last part I want to do is doing a response to an email. So let's just say I'm going to respond to this particular email. So I'm going to go over to reply. And once I have this email here, um, you'll see I have, I can just start typing in text if I want to. Um, but down below or down here, you'll actually see three dots. And I have some other options here. And so, and we're actually going to show you how to use these in the desktop version as well, but I'll go ahead and show you how to use these in the online version. They actually have a polling tool. So let's say you're trying to maybe get together for lunch or something like that, and you're not sure where you want to meet at. Um, you can actually go ahead and hit create a new poll. And what it does, and I think it uses Microsoft Forms for this, and so you go ahead and create your poll, you know, lunch. And so, you know, just put A and B or whatever, just for time purposes. And then I'll go ahead and hit next. 
And then this is what it is. And then if I go ahead and hit email, um, email it out, um, it'll actually come in just like this into the email. And then those people can actually select it and you can go ahead and view it. The view, start to view the results right there. Um, but it's a great way to do a, just a quick poll uh, within Outlook. But it works almost identical in the desktop version as well. And we'll take a look at that. So then the other one that I really love, if you're trying to find meeting times um, that match, which we all struggle with trying to, when you have two or three or four people that need to meet at the same time and you really struggle uh, to find that, you can go over to find time. And what it does, especially when it's, um, you have people um, that are at St. Leo. So if I had four or five people that were on this email chain, let's say I had, um, you know, Daniel and Candace and Carrie and Holly all on this email chain. When I hit find time, it would actually show them right here and it would start looking at your calendar to start to help find a good time for us to meet. So that's the great part about the email is if all of everybody's in the email, the current email, when you go to hit reply and you do the find time, it automatically grabs their email address and then correlates it with their Outlook calendar. And then you can start to look and start to find the different times that you have. And the darker green means it's better versus if it goes to yellow or red, then there's less um, options for people. So that's how you want to kind of look at the color coordination, but you can just start collect, you know, selecting different ones and however many you want. And once you do that and you hit next and go through the process, and I'm not going to do that one with this one right now, but once you go through that process, um, then it will automatically send that to them. And then they click the button, they select which ones that they're able to make, you know, as far as the meeting times. And then you can actually have it set up. So once everybody's responded, it'll automatically pick the best one and then it puts it on everybody's calendar. Um, but when you do select these, it automatically on your calendar puts those temporarily onto your calendar. So it basically blocks it off um, in case any one of those get picked. And then once you pick that one as a final cho uh, choice, then it removes all the other ones and just chooses that one. But you can change the duration if you want to. So if I wanted it to be an hour or something longer, then I can choose that as well. But you can see as we can toggle through, you know, maybe I'll go ahead and hit select. And then here are the options. So notify me about poll updates, um, schedule when attendees reach consensus, hold selected times on my calendar. So if you want to hold them, you can. If you don't want to hold them, you don't have to. Um, so you have a few different options here. Um, and then once you're good to go, select it, bam, it automatically puts it on everybody's calendar and you're good to go. So that is find time, which I think is a great tool for being able to try to get people a consensus of when people wanna actually do the meetings. All right. So I couldn't agree with you more, Greg. I, I, <laughs> I used to use Doodle Poll and yet, then you have to go to an external thing. And mm -hmm. uh, this was like the bomb when I started using that. It was the best thing to schedule meetings. So thanks for showing that. I yeah, think you might have been the one to show me to begin with. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, the great part about it is it's automatically tied to your Outlook account. It's not like Doodle, it's not. And I love the feature because this is fairly new where it's in the email, like when you hit reply email and everybody's on that same email, you're not having to go to another button to select something or whatever. You just hit reply, everybody's already on it, and then it just goes and scours their uh, calendar. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the desktop version. The desktop version is the one I really prefer, and I have this one up pretty much almost all day long, unless I have some other meeting that I want to keep it off of um, and turn it off, which I'll actually show you at the very end. You know, if you have a big project and you're trying to plug through things, you may want to turn it in offload, uh, offline mode where you're not continually getting pinged on stuff because um, there's nothing more distracting when 
emails just coming through and you're constantly going, Ooh, I need to answer that one. Or I need to look at that one when you're in the middle of trying to get something else done. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into the appearance part. Uh, just like we did the other one, we go up to file and we'll go to office account and you'll be able to see here, um, we got some different backgrounds that we can use. Um, so if I want to use different backgrounds, you can see up in the upper right hand corner, this is where it starts to change. So if I want to use circles, just to, you know, customize your own look and feel, you know, of your outlook if you want to. Um, so I'll just keep it with no background. But here's where it's set for colorful, which is basically, um, if you look at it right now, this is gray. This one's gray over here. And then these are basically white with the background. So if I go over here to, I can here, I have a few other options. I have what's called dark gray. So I can click that one and you can see suddenly now most of it is gray and I'll go back and I'll show you what it looks like. Now, everything but uh, the reading pan of the email turns either a darker gray or a lighter gray. Um, and you can see what happens with the colors most of the text turns white or black, depending on the shade of, of the gray. So then let's go back into here and we'll put it on to the full dark mode, um, which is black. And now we can go in and we can see now, which, um, and I'll show you why these are still showing up this way. It's because I actually have them set to a certain color. Um, in a rule. So I wouldn't use, unless I wanted to change the color of these, I wouldn't use the, the full dark one. Um, but you can play around with it. You know, usually what I tell people is, you know, put on a certain setting, use it for about a week or two, see how you like it. And if you don't, just change it back or change it to something else. Um, <clears throat> but give you a chance to, to take a look and see what it looks like uh, once you're using it. Um, and then there's full white, which is everything is white. I don't necessarily care for that one. I have to have some sort of contrast <laughs> with them, with my email. Um, so that's part of the appearance uh, there. Um, then when we start to take a look at uh, organization. So I'm going to go into uh, the view mode. So if I'm up top and I go into view, I have a few different options for setting up my layout here. Obviously you can see the toolbars at the top, which I can actually take the toolbar and shrink it, make it a little bit smaller, just like this, or I can click the arrow and pull it down so I can see everything. I usually like to leave it that way, just so I really know what I need to be clicking on. Um, all of my folders and organization of my emails are over here to the left and you can see Everything is pretty much in this archive. What I have is uh, different uh, categories, basically, or uh, folders that I put stuff into. So if it's from the reg the university, then I put it in here. I teach SLU 125 for all, so all my emails go into there. I'm on a project called the um, calendar events software. So I was putting stuff into this folder. Um, you know, really trying to set up your folder structure in here really can help to make it easier to find stuff um, and what stuff comes in. And once I'm finished with it, I just automatically just grab and drag and drop it, you know, because I could literally just grab this one. So this one I know is a simulation one. So I could just grab and drag this one over here and just drop it right into my immersion simulation one. And now that one's automatically into that folder. Um, so that's kind of an easy way to keep things organized. So I have a bunch of different folders, probably some I need to clean up. Um, but however you want to organize yours, that's kind of an easy way to, to put stuff into different folders. I don't just, I know some people probably just delete stuff all the time and get rid of it. I have probably thousands of emails that are in all these folders <laughs> that probably need to be cleaned up some as well. Um, but over here to uh, the right, you can see there's just like what we had where we had 
full view, compact view, and it's kind of a mid view. That's what this is here. So you can see as I click it, it will actually make it either more compact or less compact. More compact, I can obviously see more emails that are showing up over here. Um, the other one I like is in what's called the this one. Um, I use to do's, you know, or I use the to do app for uh, Microsoft. But what I always recommend is turning on the calendar. So you have your calendar that shows up over here to the right as well. So underneath to do, just put the calendar and all of your calendar stuff will show up over here. You know, if you have if you use the task item, you could put that in there as well. And that would actually show up. Um, but you have multiple options for reading as well. Um, I like the right one. I love this layout, you know, the bottom one. And you'll see, I don't necessarily care for this one because you barely see any of the email that shows up, but it's preference is whatever you decide you want. And so kind of play around with it and decide which one you really like as far as the layout's concerned. Um, and then you have your organization. So if I wanted to organize and find all my emails from certain people, and then I could click from, and it would actually order it, see how it starts with C and then D, E. And so it's in alphabetical order. So if you have a ton of emails, it might make it easier to find uh, by looking at it that way. Um, that way, if you had multiple emails from one person, you might be able to do it this way temporarily, just so you can see all the emails that are from that one person and then, and then answer those emails or do whatever you need to do with those particular emails. Um, so there's different ways of organizing it. I always just keep it on the date, um, but it's preference of what you all want uh, for that as well. So that's basically um, kind of organizing and the different views and sorting. So let's go over to back into home. Um, one of the things that I always recommend people, and I'll show you two different ways to do this. Um, the first way is to create a distribution group. And so a lot of times we have uh, emails that we send a group of people and a lot of, you know, we end up being stuck having to type in their email addresses every single time. Well, you shouldn't necessarily have to do that because you can create what's called a distribution group. So if we go down here to the contacts area, um, then you'll see different contacts that are in here. One of the things you can see up here is it's called new contact group. Let's say, you know, so for you, Holly, you have a group of faculty um, in your department, in the education department, and maybe you email that entire group quite often. So what you would want to do is go into new group, click this one here, call it whatever you want. And let's say, just say, you know, for now, um, education, I can spell. Um, and then what I want to do, move my Zoom toolbar, go over here to add members. And we'll go to address book. And this is where you want to start typing people's names in. So um, and the A, yeah, A, T. I'm getting mixed up here. <laughs> and yours will show up. Is your middle initial in there somewhere? Yeah, I'll put Candace's because I know that one will show up. So I go ahead and put Candace's. Go ahead and add all of these in here. Double click it. Um, I'll put Daniel in here. So once I'm good, then I go ahead and hit OK. You can see those are in here. And once I get and go ahead and hit Save and Close, it's called Education. Um, and then I'll go ahead and hit Save and Close. Now what I can do is go back to my email. And I will go to a new email from here and write in the, actually, I don't know if you that, because it, it was on a different screen, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> the joys of multiple screens. All right. So actually, let me do that again. 
and show you where, because I didn't realize that's what it was doing. All right, so here we go. I'll tell you, well, I'll just do CTLE. And then once you put in, this is the name, and this is what you'll type in the email to section. I put in CTLE, I'll go to add members, and we'll go to address book. So it has everything, and I'll go ahead and type in Candace, his name, I'll put Daniel's name, and we'll just, for time's sake, I'll just do those two. Then I'll go ahead and hit OK. Now this one's called CTLE. Actually, let me type one because I have another one already that exists. So I'm going to go save, and now you can see it show it up right here underneath my contacts. Now if I go back to email and I click new email from here, all I need to do is type in CTLE, and you can see that group that I just created actually shows up right here. And so you can see how it's, it has the plus sign. If I click that, you'll see who the members are. And especially if you have like 10, 15, 20 different people, this is a good way to do this and put it in to one group. All you have to do is just type that in CTLE, bam, it shows up, and then you can send your email. Um, so that's a cool way to create a distribution group from there. So now that we're in our email, uh, let me show you a couple of new uh, cool features that go along with the email and stuff that you can put inside your email. So one of the features that I really love is called Dictate. And so I'll show you this one. Um, we'll go ahead and hit dictate. And now it's listening to what I'm saying here. If I'm explaining something to somebody else, or I just want to just start to rattle off an email to somebody else, it'll actually type all of this stuff in here. And you can see in real time, it actually puts this in uh, to the email. Once we're finished, we go ahead and turn it off. And now I have everything that I just said. <laughs> you might, you'll definitely want to go back in and look at it to make sure it's accurate. But the times that I've used it, it's it's really accurate. Um, probably 95, 98% accurate as far as, especially if I speak clearly, um, then it definitely can uh, have that in there. But the dictation feature is definitely good for, you know, especially if you have some thoughts in your head about the email that you want and you just want to just start talking rather than sitting here typing, um, go ahead and just start talking and put it in there and then you can format it once you're finished. Um, let's go through another cool feature that you can do in here inside an email. Uh, it's called um, insert. And so there's a lot of different things that you can insert um, but one of the ones I want to show you, because a lot of times, you know, we have screenshots that we want to send to people. You know, I know for our team, we help out the faculty a lot. And a lot of times it's, let me show you an example of this, or here's how you can fix this or something like that. You go to the screenshot tool. Um, and what I'm going to do, you can do one of these windows, because these are the two windows I have open right now. Or I can go to screen clipping, and I'll go ahead and click this. And you'll see now it pulled it up and now I have the option with my target, the X here, to pick something to do a screenshot of. So I'll just do a screenshot of this, let go, and it automatically pops it into the email. Um, so it's a great way, a quick way, rather than, you know, opening up your snippet tool or whatever separately from your email, just do it right inside that replying <laughs> email. Um, and it automatically pops it in. You don't have to go copying it and then pasting it in. It automatically puts it in there. And then once you're in there, once it's in, you could resize it if you wanted to. Um, so the screenshot tool is really cool to put in uh, as well. So let me go ahead and go back to insert and I'll show you a couple other items. So here's that polling tool that we can do the same thing. We can insert the poll and so this may take a second to to load but let's just say we're doing lunch a b 
And then we'll go ahead and hit next, add it to the email. And I didn't realize it was gonna ask me to I think I got logged out of Office 365, so now it's forcing me to log back in uh, using it. So I could. I could type, and we'll get it. Come on. Okay, there we go. Yes. All right, now it should let me add it to the email. And it'll show up a little bit different than this. See, right now it actually shows up this way. But if I actually went to somebody's email, the full um, poll would actually show up inside the email. Uh, it doesn't necessarily show up just like this. It shows up a little bit different. Um, but the polling feature is really cool to add. Uh, another feature that I love um, to add here as well is your calendar. A lot of times, you know, you can do the find time uh, to be able to do that. But maybe you just want to be able to send your calendar to somebody and say, hey, you know what? Just choose a time of when I'm available. Well, they don't necessarily know when you're available. So if I go to calendar and you can see I'm only giving them my availability. I'm not showing them what meetings I have or anything like that. Um, maybe only working hours if I want to do that as well. And we'll say like the next seven days. Um, so I'll go ahead and hit OK, and you'll actually see that it's actually going to embed my calendar right into that particular email. So somebody else can come down and go, OK, you know what? Greg's free from here to here. He's free there. He's free here. You know, um, he's free on those times. He's busy on those times. So it's a quick way um, to be able to send somebody else your calendar to take a look at um, to get get that part organized as well. So that's a pretty cool feature um, in there as well. Then you also have uh, the find time feature. I won't go completely through it, but you do have to add this on. Um, and I'll be adding this as part of the instructions that'll end up on the website as well. Um, but this is an added tool that you can put in to your, uh, um to your outlook and so once we have this here uh let's do this let me once you click this and i don't know if it's going to find let me open that up and see if it'll look for those two yep there we go so see how these two were in the email and it automatically looked to find available times that the three of us could meet. Um, when I click this new meeting poll, find time, it automatically showed that. And let's say I want to have an hour with Candace and Daniel, then it shows that. Um, obviously, tomorrow I showed you that the green is good and the red is bad. And so obviously, tomorrow is not a good day uh, for us all three to meet. So, but it's a quick way to take a look uh, from here and just go through the same steps we went through before uh, to take a look at that. All right, so let me go through um, and one other feature that I really love as well, and this is called Quick Parts. And so over here underneath the, the insert, and then you go to Quick Parts, you can add standard text that you might, let's say you have some instructions. Like I have some instructions here that's all about here are the steps to do Office 365. And I find myself sending this out like 
umpteen times to people because I constantly have people asking me here, how do you do this or how do you do that? I don't want to have to type it up every time. I just want to have it where I could send it to them really quickly. So I went ahead and created this one um, earlier. And now if I double click this, you'll actually see it popped that whole thing right into the email, saving time, having it you know, the same every single time, which is really nice uh, to be able to do. So let's say I wanna be able to create one. Um, and this is the part that I wanted to um, save it to quick parts. So then the next email I get, I'll have this already saved and then I can do that. I go up here to quick parts. You can see I already have it highlighted. So highlight what you want here and then hit save selection. Give it your name. So let's say visit Microsoft. Um, it'll be saved to the quick parts gallery under the general category. Go ahead and hit OK. And now when we go up here to quick parts, you can see that one right here just got saved. So now anytime I'm in an email and I'm responding to somebody else, I could literally take that quick part, pop that in. And so let me go ahead and hit and put this here. I go up to quick parts and I say, this is the one I want. Hit it, snap it, pops it in, you're good to go. So I think this is a great safe time saver uh, for standard text that you might have you could put an image in there. You can put other things in there too, if you wanted to, that you might want to send to people as well. Um, so let's see. Um, the next feature I'm going to go into is called Quick Steps. And so let me exit out of this one because we're not going to save that. Um, right in the middle under the Home tab, you'll see what's called Quick Steps. And you can see I actually have some Quick Steps here. Basically, it's a one click to have something happen for you. And usually one of the best ones, and I'll show you how to do this real quick, is the emails. So if you have a standard email that you want to send to somebody, you know, we did the distribution group before, but you can actually have a standard email that you might want to send somebody. So I'm a pride leader um, and just started uh, about a month or two ago as a pride leader. And I have a particular email that I'll send people. If um, Isaiah emails me and says, hey, you're a pride leader of so-and-so, then I'll just walk up, I'll come up here. I'll literally click this. And then it opens up my email that I have automatically. Now I will have to change a couple of things like probably the date and the time. Um, but I have my standard email that I can send. I don't have to sit here and type this whole thing out. Um, it's definitely a time saver uh, for that as well. Automatically has the subject in here. Um, I'll go ahead and put their names in here as well, but it's a generic one that I can add names and, and change the text that I need to. But at least I have this part started so I don't have to recreate the whole thing. So let me go over to the quick steps and I'll show you really quickly how to create a quick step. So we'll go ahead and hit this drop down here. Taking a second here. So now you can see all the different quick steps I already have in here. What you're going to actually do is you're going to go into new, and then we're going to go to custom. And then you type in whatever you want. So let's say just an email. And then I'm going to go choose action. And you can go through yourself and start to. Um, take a look at these like you know if I wanted to move something to a particular folder um, or delete a message yeah, I could have that be a quick step that would automatically happen um, if you want to categorize or flag things automatically you can but here's the one that I have here it's new message um, but you can also see you can have a forward automatically forward it too I go ahead and hit new message and let's just say um, we're going to do a new message to Daniel Zordon, and I'll go ahead and put his name in here. Go ahead and hit this drop down to see the options. And then this is where you can put in your subject heading. You can go ahead and put in your text here. Um, so we'll go ahead and put in your text. And I, hopefully, if I have enough time, I'll go over this part here of how to do a one minute delay, which has saved me quite a bit. 
<laughs> you know, with the emails that you send off and you go, wait a minute, I didn't need to change that. Um, so you could do that as well. Um, so set that once you're finished, then um, let's do um, quick step email and I'll just put that in there. All right, so I'll go finish. Now I'm gonna hit okay. Now you can see that one showed up underneath my quick step and I'm gonna go ahead and double click that. And now automatically that email just popped up uh, that has his email address in here. There's the subject heading, there's the text there. I can change it. So it's a quick way to create um, some emails that you may want to, to push out to other people um, rather than creating it all from scratch. All right, so let's go to uh, the next step. So let's say I'm gonna reply um, to this person here. And I'll go ahead and hit reply. All right, then I'm going to go over here to what's called rules. And rules are extremely powerful, and I can only just barely scrape the surface. But if you want to have a ton of customizations for your emails and your calendar and all that kind of stuff, definitely dig in deeper into rules. So what we're gonna do is we're going to um, create a new rule for this one. So you can see, I'm gonna create a rule, rule and it's gonna be from this person, um, Daniel Bonner. Um, if I wanted it just for the subject heading, you know, you could do that. Um, if it's just sent to you, you can do that as well. Um, one of the other pieces that you can do um, that I like. So let's say there's a particular person that you, every time you get an email from them, it's really important. Like you really wanna make sure you always see that particular email over everything else. One of the things I recommend doing, and let's say that's this Daniel, per, uh, Daniel person, um, go ahead and hit display to new item alert win window. And what that will do is as soon as one comes in, it literally puts a box similar to this size and it'll say their name and it'll say what the email address is. And it stays on your screen until you decide you wanna get rid of it. So depending on who it is, um, let's say, you know, you know, for me, it's with Candace's emails, I might wanna check her and check display item. And then every single time she sends me an email address, it literally pops up on the screen and it stays on the screen until I click it to view the email. And so that's a really powerful way to be able to go in and check um, uh, to, to see where, where we're at. Then there's advanced options. And this is where you could really dig in um, here to say, let's say it's from Danielle. I'm gonna go to next um display a specific message um i could have it move to a specific folder remember what i was talking about if there's certain emails you might want to move to a specific folder you could do that um, you could automatically delete it there's some of these that i probably should just have so as soon as i get them they're kind of like spam and i don't really care to see them anymore i can set it up and just say automatically delete this as soon as it comes in you know, or permanently delete it. So it's completely off of my outlook. Um, so there's that that you can do. Then there's exemptions. So depending on what it is and maybe what's said in the subject heading or something like that, you can get into as well. Um, so I'm not gonna dive too deep into it because there's, you can see there's just a ton of options for rules, but you can really start to customize uh, what that's gonna look like for who you're, who you're taking a look at. All right, so one more feature that I'm gonna take a look at here, and it is, we're gonna create a, a brand new rule. Let me go ahead and discard this. So I'll go to rules, we're gonna create a new rule. Um, advanced options.
me see here. All right, so I think I forgot exactly where this one's at. <laughs> this is the hard part when you're doing so many of these different ones, try to remember where everything's at. All right, let me do two other ones real quick, and then um, I'm going to show you all. Actually, let me show you this one. So a lot of us use Teams, um, and I didn't realize this until fairly recently. Um, that you can actually respond to your team's message right inside of Outlook. Um, I didn't realize that these were hyperlinked um, right in here. So um, Emily sent me a message says, thanks, Greg. So I could actually just hit reply and actually put a message right here and just hit send and do it right there. I don't have to open up Teams. I can actually do it right within, right within that difference, that spot. And so to me, that's a really cool feature. Um, because if you've, if you're not on teams and you haven't viewed it within like 10 minutes, it automatically, for me, my notifications are set up. So it automatically sends me an email, but I could literally respond to her within teams from here. Um, I could also take this email message and I have this button up here called share to teams. And I could literally click this button here and share this email in Teams and you can choose what channel you want to actually put it in. And so usually you had to go, you used to have to grab the email address of the existing channel and you had to know what that was and then you had to put it in there and then send it. This way you literally um, open it up. Let me see if it'll, it's gonna open here in another window. So let me show you. So here's where it automatically opened up this window here, where now what I can actually do is type in um, the name of the channel. So let's just say it's the CTLE channel. And then I can go to what, um, which channel that I wanna put it in. And so it automatically go under the general channel and CTLE. And when I hit share, it automatically shows up in Teams. So that's kind of a cool way to share out an email, but it's a little bit faster than trying to find that email address that you had before. Um, and then one other thing that I'll talk about just real quick is you can actually add, uh, hopefully if you haven't already done so, you can add Zoom as an add-on as well. So if I go to get add-ons here, um, and I type in Zoom for Outlook, then I can literally just add that there, uh, add it to, um, to my Outlook, and then I can create meetings using Zoom uh, scheduling. So, um, 